أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا حبيب إله العالمين محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين We were talking about types of worship and different aspects of worship. If you remember, we said that worship is not just uh, invocation of the name of God or fasting and prayer. It has many different areas. And actually, everything in life, if it is uh, brought into line with that uh, straight path which Allah has uh, described for us can be a worship in that way even our daily business can be worship our studies can be worship whatever a person does can be a worship depending on with what intention they do it and that is the meaning of dedicating oneself to worship or to service of God completely but uh, there are certain types of worship which we call worship Like, for example, what is mentioned in the Qur'an, the three main pillars of, uh, of the worship that we know. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةِ يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورٌ Those who recite the Book of God. So recitation of the Book of God is one of the topmost uh, uh, worships that a person can do and recitations of course should always go with pondering thinking and trying to get the intention of uh, the revelation what God has intended to tell us in, in this recitation and then of course prayers the formal prayers aqamu salat and then giving money in charity, giving one's property, one, what one's own in charity. These are the three main, of course, pillars of, uh, of worship. We usually neglect that first bit, the recitation of the Book of God, which is one of the most important parts of worship. What other things? There are certain worships which go in the, in, in the heart without us doing anything. For example, love of God in itself is worship. We have in tradition uh, that uh, what a prophet has in his heart, what the prophet has in his heart is higher than the worship of all worshippers. That's the type of knowledge, oh, and that prophets have for God in the heart. Uh, also, In another hadith we have uh, from uh, uh, Rasulullah, uh, from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, إِنَّ فَوْقَ كُلِّ عِبَادَةٍ عِبَادَةٌ Above every worship there is another worship. So that means worships have different degrees in their merits. Some worships are higher in merit than others. Like for example we have jihad fi sabilillah is one of those highest Uh, worships in grade and the tradition here says above every ibadah is another ibadah and love of us Ahlul Bayt is the highest the toppest of all the worship now of course Ahlul Bayt are to be loved because of their closeness to God. Because we love God, we love anyone who's close to God. However, this love shows some sort of uh, uh, enlightenment in the heart. Because these people bring light. And if that love is there, that enlightenment uh, would bring their love to the heart. So it is regarded as an active, it's not a passive sort of worship or, or, or thing. 
This love is not a passive sort of thing. And this love is not an artificial thing that you say, oh, I love because my parents say or because uh, uh, it has sawab or something like that. No. When you know them, when you get close to their to the understanding of their qualities, then that love comes, like love of the Prophet, peace be on him. Of course, there are mysterious ways uh, with which human heart works. Things go from heart to heart without we knowing it. And uh, as Rumi says, the, mis the mystery is what goes from the heart to the heart without any expression, without anything said. So this is another type. This is one of the highest type of ibadah, hubbuna ahl al-bayt. What else are mentioned as ibadah? If you give your brothers in faith their due and their right, that is also the highest type of ibadah and worship. That's, uh, that's a different, completely different area, completely different field. If you work to uh, meet the needs of your brethren in faith. That is another type of ibadah. In hadith uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have man sa'a fi hajata akhih al mu'min, whoever tries to fulfill the needs of their brethren. فَكَأَنَّمَا عَبَدَ اللَّهِ تِسْعَةَ آلَافِ سَنَةِ سَائِمًا نَهَارَةِ قَائِمًا لَيْلَةِ Whoever does that is like someone who has worshipped 900 years, all days fasting, all nights praying. Wow, very easy one, isn't it? You, you, you try to, to meet the need of one of your uh, brothers or sisters in faith, and the thawab of these 900 years of worship is written for you. This shows worship, as I said before, is not just dedicating oneself to, uh, to uh, mentioning the name of God or praying and fasting. There, there are these very many different fields. Uh, what else uh, is about a, a very Beautiful hadith from the Prophet, peace be on him. Looking at the face of Alim, of course, by Alim here means Al Alim al Rabbani, a man who is a man of God, who knows about God, whose heart is filled with knowledge of God. Then looking into his face is in itself a worship, as we have in other traditions. Looking in the face of Ali is an ibadah, of course, that was for his contemporaries, not for us. But uh, because it brings that feeling into our heart. If you look in the face of an alim, it brings that feeling. But where can we find that alim? That's the whole, the, the, the whole problem, isn't it? That al alim al rabbani. One nazar al al imam al muqsad ibadah. A leader who's just looking at that leader is ibadah because. Their behavior, their just behavior, would bring that uh, sense of presence of God into the heart. Like, for example, Imam Khomeini, rahmatullah he was a just leader. When he ruled, uh, he was a just leader. And really looking at him, looking at his manners, his behavior, the way he lived, where he lived, I mean, when Edward Short, not the, the then Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister of Russia, went to visit Imam Khomeini, when he was led to his room, which were a very small room, he, the, the back room was his, uh, uh, his residence and the front room was his office. There were two very small rooms, most of you have seen that, you have gone to Jamaran, probably have seen. He, I never forget I, his picture on, uh, 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 on TV. His hands were shaking when he was reading the message of, uh, uh, of uh, Gorbachev to Imam Khomeini. Of course, if he was led into a palace, just like all the palace that kings live, his hand wouldn't have shake, shaken. But seeing that frugality and seeing that zuhd, 
and abstinence, and then the command that he had over people. Now, looking at, uh, at such a man is a bother in itself because it brings remembrance of God to the heart. Having a mercy and compassionate look at the parents is worship as well. Of course, this is one of the most important things that every religion, every religion have advised us, that uh, we have to be kind to our parents. Now, these are more uh, accessible sort of types of worships. Put aside Ali ibn Abi Talib and Al-Alam or Rabbani, these are more accessible. Looking into the face of a brother that you love them, for God, for the sake of God, because they are like you, because they are believers, and you, you love them because of their faith. This is also another type of ibadah. Once Jibreel said to the Prophet, peace be on him, Ya Muhammad. If we wanted to worship as you human beings on earth. Now, the angels, of course, they, they live in a different realm. They, they, their worship is absolutely different. The way they, of course, know God is different from the way we know God. However, Jebrail says, if we were to be placed in your shoes and we would have come to earth as human beings, the way we had worshipped God, لو كانت إبادتنا على وجه الأرض لعملنا ثلاث خصال. The three top most things that we would have done as our worship would have been. Now this is very very interesting. I mean the angels, Jibreel, Allah says that يسبحون الليل والنهار لا يفترون. They are praising God morning and evening. They never get tired. That is their food. That is their life. That is their energy. Everything comes from this tasbih and tahmid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, he says, when we, if we were to be placed in your place on earth, you know what we would have done at the top most of our worship? Saqiyul ma'al al muslimin would have given water to muslimin, especially at that time where, of course, water was quite scarce and very difficult to get. وَإِغَاثَةُ أَصْحَابِ الْعِيَالِ And helping the people who have many people to look after. أَصْحَابُ الْعِيَالِ They have large families and they have to look after them. We would have helped them. And uh, the next thing is سَتْرُ الظُّنُوبِ We would have covered the sins of the people. We would have not revealed it. We would have concealed the sins of the people. Which is of course one of the most important things that we have to do. Sometimes we think that if we see a sin from someone, for example, you pass by some place and you see one of your brothers or sisters who is very good coming to mosque and such and such, you see them indulging in some sin. We think that it's our duty to go and inform others that, well, I saw such and such person who usually comes to the mosque that he or she was doing something. You know that this informing process is a graver sin, is a major sin. That sin that that person is doing might, might be a minor sin or something forgiven. This information that we pass on, that we actually somehow spread the word about that sin, that's in itself a bigger sin. فَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Those who like to spread the sins of the believers. For them there is a great punishment in this world and in the next world. So it's very important that, and also we have to cover our own sins as well. Don't think that if you do something wrong you have to go and tell somebody. No, you only say it to God. We don't have this uh, uh, penance or confes confession in Islam. Of course, one of the sacraments in Christianity is penance or confession, isn't that you have to go to a priest and confess that you have 
you haven't done a sin. I, in a way, psychologically, you think that you, you release yourself from the pangs of that sin which is in hold of you. You say it, you confess it, and you repent. However, we aren't allowed to talk about our sins to anyone because Allah wants to cover it. We shouldn't reveal it. Allah wants to conceal it. We shouldn't bring it to open because apart from the the, the, the individual harm which it brings to us, it has a social harm as well because it makes the sin so commonplace. People think that, yes, m many people actually sin. So it may be quite possible for us as well to sin. So uh, not only we are not allowed to reveal the sins of others or to spread the word about it, we are not allowed to do it for ourselves. The only, the only being to whom we confess is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only person from whom we seek forgiveness is not the priest, is not alim or anyone. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can forgive. So, Satur al is another thing that Jibreel says, have we angels were to come on earth and live on earth, these are the types of worship that we have done. Okay, enough of this, probably. Al-Hamidun, Al-Atta'ibun, Al-Abidun, Al-Hamidun. Now, the third quality that Allah mentioned in the surah are those who praise God, Al-Hamidun. Now, Hamd, of course, all of us know what praise or Hamd is. We praise God for whatever he has given us and we praise God for whatever beauty he has manifested from himself. The difference from hand and shuk, because usually when a bounty or a favor is given to us by Allah, we say Alhamdulillah, praise to God. And or we say Ashukrulillah, thanks to God. The difference between praise Hamd. Of course, praise may be not a, a very uh, accurate translation of hamd. The difference between hamd and shukr is that shukr is usually is offered for something which is given to you personally. This is shukr. Hamd is offered to, to a beauty, to something done which you like, which you praise, which you are amazed of. This is so... Whatever Allah has created brings in our heart the hamd and praise. Whatever he has given to us brings in our heart the shukr and thankfulness and gratitude. So uh, this, this is the slight difference. Therefore, every shukr is hamd, but not every hamd is shukr. We praise God for his beauties, but it may not be just a shukr coming directly from us. Uh, Ibn Abbas rahmatullah alayh, reports from the Prophet peace be on him man yud'a the first people who are called to paradise on the day of judgment now you have heard that the day of judgment lasts 50,000 years isn't it yawman kana miqdaruhu 50 alf sana so when we say day we don't mean 24 hours or a day as proper as we uh, we speak in this world just like days that Allah talks about the phases of creation he has created heavens and earth in six days that is six phases six periods not six 24 hours not Saturday Sunday Monday as we have it in the Bible isn't it in the Bible they say that he started to create in Sunday and took rest in Saturday and uh, if there was no sun and moon to start with, where was Sunday and Monday and Tuesday? So uh, we have to realize that these are six periods, not six days. Just like the Day of Judgment. kana A day where its number, its, 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 uh, its uh, length is 50,000 a day. Its length is 50,000 years. Of course, there is another verse in the Quran talking about 1,000 years. That's a completely different thing, 1,000 years. Uh, 
في يوم كان مقداره خمسون كان مقداره ألف سنة مما تعدون ثم تعرج إليه في يوم سوري ثم تعرج إليه في يوم كان مقداره خمسون ألف سنة this shouldn't be confused with that 1000 years which you mentioned that's not our concern now are we all going to really go through that difficult moments 50000 years 50000 years is almost 700 800 times our our life span on earth are we going to experience that life now the tradition tells us that not everyone would have that long period to wait, should wait for that long period. Only those who eventually, eventually are on the brink of hell would wait for 50,000 years. Because God wants to, as much as possible, wants to purify, to somehow make the sins fall. So they go through a long, long process so that at the end they could just pass and get the admission to paradise and some make it some don't make it those who don't make it have to go to a hell for a for a while until shafa'a will take them out again and we don't know how long that would take different for different people however not everyone needs that purification there are certain people who are already purified here so the whole thing may just last for them a couple of days not more than that or a couple of hours, not more than that. So people are called to paradise at different stages of that day of judgment, are admitted to paradise at different stages. We better try to make that journey short here. If we make it here short, it would be very easy for us there. If we don't make it here, if we are somehow troubled with all sorts of troubles, sins and such things, then our task would be very difficult there, very difficult. And we go through very hard tribulations until the soul reaches that qualification to be admitted to paradise. So it would be made easy here. This hadith says, أَوَّلُ مَنْ يُدْعَى إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ First people who are called to paradise. Of course, put aside Mugarrabun. Mugarrabun are different. They are straight away taken to paradise as they die. The, and then they are brought back to the scene of Mahshar for witnessing and such things. But ordinary people, the first people who are called to paradise, Alladina those who pray God in comfort and in hardship. It's very difficult to praise God in hardship, isn't it? Sometimes very difficult. Sometimes we, we try to be quite critical of what God does because we think that we know better than Him how He should have run the affairs, especially in our affairs, because we think that we know how things should go for us or should have gone for us in this life. However, those who يحمدون الله في السراء والذراء are the first people who are called to paradise. Now there's a deeper thing here, which I promised last night to mention to you, from Sahif al-Sajjadiyya of Imam Zain al-Abidin. This is amazing. I mean, one can ponder on this for hours and hours to find out what is going in the mind of one of these muharrabun like Imam alayhi salam. What makes him to look at things in the way he look at them? And what makes us to look at things in a different way? Now, in the 35th uh, dua of Sahif al-Sajjadiyya, this Sahif al-Sajjadiyya is a very, very precious uh, wealth at our disposal because it actually manifests the soul and heart of a man of God, the way he speaks to God. You know, when Prophet and Emma speak to us, they speak to us according to our capacity and understanding. But when they are speaking to God, they are speaking their heart, they are speaking their mind. 
And Saif al-Sajjadiyya is that book. Imam is speaking to God. And it manifests what goes inside his heart and his mind. Now, one thing he says is, is, is a relatively very short dua. Talking, saying that God make me happy with whatever you have given me. Make me satisfied. When I look at other people, actually the title of the dua, the 35th dua, is that his supplication in satisfaction with the decree when he looked at what other people had and he didn't have. This is very important. When we look at what other people have and we do not have. And then hesitation starts to come. God, why have you distributed your mercy in this way? Why do you have given some more to some people, less to other people? Why some people are starving, some people are dying of overeating, for example? Why is this the case? Why is this the case? Our small, tiny intellect cannot find the wisdom behind it. Cannot find the wisdom. The only way for us is to submit that he knows better. Now you may say that this is not act of God, this is act of human beings. That we are actually responsible for this unjust distribution of wealth. That's true. But at the end of the day, God is allowing it to happen, isn't it? You have to think in a level above our human level. Or eventually, even if you say, no, that is not just, is it just that God creates some of his creatures as snakes and others as angels and others as human beings? Is this fair? Is this fair that some are created as cockroaches that everyone hates and some are created as human beings with high intellect, for example? Is that fair? Why has he distributed this way? Our wisdom falls short here. We don't know. It is his world. It is his creation. We are that tiny, small creature on this tiny, small planet, in this tiny, small solar system, in this tiny, small galaxy, in the whole universe, which is a tiny, small thing in creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we want to somehow object to his wisdom. This shows we are fools, isn't it? If we want to object to his wisdom, it means we are stupid. We don't think who we are. We don't know where are we standing. We don't know our positions. Now, uh, he says in that dua that uh, says that, oh God, give me, give to me a trust through which I may admit that your decree runs only to the best. I have to admit it with my heart. And the important thing, watch al, this is what I want to, us to think about. Waj al shukri laka ala ma zawaita anni aw faraman shukri iyaka ala ma khawaltani. Let my gratitude to you for what you have taken away from me or for what you have deprived me of be more than my gratitude than what you have conferred upon me, what you have given me. Ah, this is very strange. Let me thank you for, your, you for what you have not given me, more than thanking you for what you have given me. How does this work? How does this work? It works in this way. It works in this way that this praise, this gratitude is that I know your wisdom is perfect. I know whatever you have given me is out of that wisdom. And I know whatever you have not given me is again springing from that wisdom. So I have to thank both of it. This is a selfless person. This is a man who sees God before himself. Our problem is that always, always, of course, we see ourselves before God. We put our wisdom before God's wisdom. We put our interest before God's 
way of mysterious way of working in the world and therefore we we say things that we say here this is a man of God he sees God before himself and he says whatever you haven't given me I have to thank you for it because it it springs out of your wisdom because you haven't given them to me for a good purpose otherwise of course your atah your gift is abundant you can give whoever whatever you wish if you haven't given something to me it is because of your wisdom and I thank you for that can we work out how these people think and why they are placed at the level of muharrabun, those who are close, close to God it is the way they look at things the way they look at the world the way they are uh, interacting with God which places them among the muharrabun. now there are other things about uh, there's one beautiful hadith about this hand that inshallah we will discuss it tomorrow night wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin